Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Crashy, and today we're going to be playing some Chimera Jungle. Chimera, probably the best jungler to learn if you are new to the role, and uh, I probably should have done one of my last videos on Chimera just because of that fact. You don't even really have to kite with him, he just has so much crazy regen. You still kind of do it just for good practice, but he has crazy, crazy regen, and he is just like one of the best solo queue junglers in the game, if not one of the best junglers in the game. So we're going to be playing him, we're going to uh, talk about every decision that I'm making. I'll talk a little bit about the build as well. Well, and I'm gonna kind of try to keep it somewhere in the middle between like being a super uh, You know like a beginner guide or like, you know discussion for you to to learn the game versus um, You know something that's some decent information for everybody. So I'll talk about my build and such um, But yeah, we're just finishing this camp second camp. We're gonna do a full clear most likely We'll get a little bit more active because Kai can can invade really really well He's probably like the like one of the best invading junglers just because he has so much sustain so he can beat out his enemies um, like rather easily um, so what I can actually do, you know what, I'll, I'll even, I'll even step on the gas a little bit early and kind of show you what I mean. So I'm assuming that their Grux jungle started on his side, uh, or like his red side, because that's where most junglers should start, w like will start. So I'm not going to smite here. What I am going to use is one of my sentries to try to gain a little bit of information here. So we're going to sentry. There's a ward here. So they know that, you know, they know at minimum I'm there. You might ward. Okay, I can jump on her. Okay. All right, so we'll just walk away. See if she leaves that alone. And we're gonna look to invade. Okay. So, not gonna invade that much. If the if the Bellica's on to me, I'll just grab the river, which I can do, and then I'll have the flash here. Unfortunately, try to use my E to get out of that to cleanse his knockup, but it didn't quite work. But that's fine. We'll grab the river, and then we'll just continue farming. So. Didn't work out the way I wanted because she actually came and looked. Um, again, beauty of Kai is he can kind of heal himself, so I'm not really uh, too worried about my health here. Like, I use my E, use my regeneration off my passive, and just keep moving. So, we're able to at least get one of those river buffs. Not the most uh, efficient thing in the world, but it's whatever. And we're just going to keep farming. Keep farming. Grayson's looking solid in the offlane, like potential gank there. So as you're pathing through the jungle, you should be looking at your lanes and trying to make a decision about what you're gonna do. Uh, with Chimera, we are gonna be leveling up his Unleash first, which is his Q ability for PC players, and then we're gonna be leveling up his Ambush. Last will be his Invigorate. It does heal him a little bit more, but it's, it's pretty negligible, so we're not too, too worried about that. So yeah, as you're farming, look ahead and try to make a, you know, a, a judgment about, you know, what you could potentially do. So we're going to sweep a little bit. At minimum, I can, you know, cut out a ward. And then that'll probably be the end here, because now they know that I'm here. We'll cut out the ward, and we have at least over, a, you know, 1087. That's 950 for our Barbaric Cleaver. So this is important for talking about when to back and, and, you know, understanding power spikes. So grabbing this Barbaric Cleaver, that's a power spike, right? Like, we use some of the gold that we have uh, to get back out, um, you know, to the base, and then to purchase that power spike. Now, that's going to help us with our clear. Barbaric Cleaver does, like, cleave damage around the hits. So you're going to see whenever I smack... AOE damage. So when I use my Q, lots of AOE damage. So this is going to help our clear. Uh, whenever this item Overlord is completed, it's going to convert a lot of health into power, which is like a really good way of being like bruisery and tanky, uh, but still doing some damage. So, all right, we're just clearing for the time being. I'm looking at my lanes. You can see my dual lane is pushed up. Let me try to explain that. I'm looking at my lanes. Is there a gank here? That's the question that I'm looking at right now. Looking at my mid, looking at my dual lane. Is there a gank here? And uh, if you're looking at it similar to, similarly lead to me, then you should recognize that there's not really a gank here. The lanes are kind of pushed up. There's not really much going on. Now what I could do, put another point in my ambush or my unleash, sorry. We'll sweep, we'll look for anti-wards. And now that they're pushing up a little bit, We'll at least clear that, and we can go in on him. He's not paying attention. Maybe force a flash here. Okay, a little bit of damage, and then whenever we do something like that, we can look for an invade. So, there's the carry. He's going to shove me back. I see the Bellica. I was looking at the map. She might be rotating over a bit. So, we're kind of looking for her. There's the Bellica. So, hopefully my teammates will back up from that, and I'm going to continue farming. We're just going to continue farming. 
And all the while, I'll be pressing tab and looking for their jungler, trying to make, uh, you know, keep tabs on him and like what he's trying to do. Keep tabs at his farm. So like last time he was spotted, it was 34 farm to 46. It might be a little bit more now. I just saw, I looked at the map and saw that gravestone put a ward next to my three camp. So I know that there's vision on the three camp. Um, I see that he's at 40, 43 farm now because the, the uh, Grux just spotted on the map. So as you press tab again, that information is going to update. So we're gaining some information here. All right, mid's missing. I could go to river buff right now, but I think I'm just going to clear. And what we'll probably do is we'll sweep out this ward as well. So we're going to find this ward that I know is here. Fortunately, our duo lane is getting a little bit bullied around by their, uh, by their twin blast, but I haven't got my ultimate and haven't had the best opportunity to help that. All right. Now that I finished this up, we might look for a gank on this Greystone. He does have his ultimate. Um, or what I can look to do is just get some timers and some information on the enemy jungle here. So that's his ultimate. I know he doesn't have that. There's the Grux. I might look to steal a camp here. His full red side jungle is up. All right, we're just going to back out of here. We're just going to back out of here. He does have his ultimate now. Might jump on the Bellica real quick. Nothing there. Don't need to force too, too much. We'll just walk out. All right, back to my two camp. I wanted to try to see if I could contest that Grux, but the Bellica probably just would have rotated over. Now, we're a little ahead of, it, ahead of him in farming, but I do need to try to get some influence on the lanes. So I need to probably show up in duo lane here soon. Yeah, we're going in here. We're looking to go in here. We're going to run into our gank if we can. Turn on the Richter. And that's a couple flashes, which is not amazing. We're going to look to see if we can invade this. Got a couple other flashes, at least. That should hopefully pull some pressure. And we can run away from that. All right, not bad. I'm basically just farming my 1600 gold points. So you can see I'm at 1394 looking for that 1600 gold point. Um, Chimera, like I said, is, has the luxury of being a jungler that can stay on field for quite a while. Um, so I'm just kind of farming up, seeing what I can get if I can get close to that point and just full buy that item. But I also do want to help my teammates. I don't want to just let them get, uh, get bullied in this duo lane. Sometimes you just have to force it a gank, right? Like you just like tell them, hey, look, we're running in, right? Nice, that's uh, off lane. Uh, Grux is showing up. So again, we see him at 68 farm. He's got two assists, so he should be a little ahead of me in terms of actual gold. What we'll probably do is we're probably just going to wipe out this full... Um, we're going to wipe out this full jungle side, or I might look for an invade on him. Well, he's in mid now, so now I don't want to look for an invade. If he stayed over on that side of the map, we can look for an invade. But... We're probably going to wipe this out because if I can put some kind of pressure, I have my flash, I have my crest, I'm going to have my ultimate. If I can put some kind of pressure on the duo lane, then I can force a fang tooth. And that's going to be something that, that Chimera can do very, very well. So we're going to wipe all of this farm out really quickly so I can, I can build that play. So I'm thinking ahead. Again, same thing. I'm looking at my lanes. Do I have a gank? Mid, maybe, you know, because she's starting to push up. Greystone in the off lane. Honestly, I hate ganking Greystone. With his ultimate, it's just such a long investment of time that I basically leave a Greystone off lane alone most of the time. Uh, but we're going to buy this 1600 Overlord. We'll start building a Basilisk next and uh, we'll get things moving. All right, we're going to go Ice Scorn Towns this game, build a sword off the Basilisk, and we're going to keep moving. So know your prices, too. This is important, right? Like, I saw my gold. I instantly knew I could buy the uh, the Overlord and then a uh, sword from the Bone Saw. So know your prices. Um, I don't see anybody on field. They might be doing Fangtooth right now. I'm sweeping my way towards it. We're looking at it. We're looking to flash in. Oh, I smited it low, but didn't quite get it there. Smited it low, but wasn't quite on it. We're going to try to jump on the Bellica. I'm dead to the Twin Blast here. 
but hopefully my teammates will clean up. I sweated it down to 11, so I tried to predict the damage as I could. Didn't quite work out for me, but that's okay. It's a little bit of a trade. I got two assists off that. Our carry got two kills. That's pretty, pretty solid. Or at least some kills. Yeah, not bad. Not terrible trade. It would have been even better if I would have smited it. But yeah, so with the smite, you just have to know that you have to anticipate the damage. If I wouldn't have had my flash there at all, I wouldn't even have tried. Keep that in mind. I had my blink, my teleport, my flash, whatever you want to call it. If I wouldn't have had that at all, I wouldn't have tried because the Bellica keeps me out. She's going to she's gonna CC me and stun me and try to keep me away for a second. And then I have to close that gap on the objective. It was close, uh, but it didn't work out. So uh, we're just going to continue farming. I've got my red side jungle is up all right we'll smite that down and we just got to keep staying farm relevant try to stay farm relevant all right start putting our points into our ambush ability now and 012 on kai is not a terrible stat line i could definitely be invading a little bit more um but none of our lanes have priority and what that means is none of our lanes have been really able to push really aggressively i would say in most cases unless you're dual lane and you're freezing the lane at your tower keeping your lane pushed is is like is power in this game and what i mean by that is like if you keep your lane pushed you know you're not you're not really gonna be uh like worried about let me think of how to word this if you keep your lane pushed you're not you can worry more about roaming and you can think about roaming and ganking more than if they're just rotating over to you and trying to gank you unless you're ran all the way up the tower but if you keep your lane pushed and then you roam that's a pretty good way to do it so i would say duo is probably the exception to that um all right we're gonna try a mini prime we're just gonna see if i can rip this down stay out of the fire trail of the mini prime I'm going to walk away from this knockback, and then I'll use my uh, Invigorate. So out of the fire trail, on the next knockback, I'm going to use my my cleanse. All right. All right, we got us the mini prime. All right. Ooh. I'm getting beat up here. We have the Muriel. Just change targets. My goodness, dude. Grux was Grux in there. He was doing his thing, bro. He was shredding through me. Um, now with Bellica pushed out, I have the mini prime. Mini prime empowers. Ah, I can't shove up. Not much I can do. Unfortunately, the dual lane rotated over, so there's not a whole lot I can do there. That sucks. All right, that sucks because I lose the mini prime. Well, we're just back to reset. So okay. We're reset now, meaning like, you know, I, I don't have a play on field. Looking at my map, I've got some farm coming up. Uh, we're just going to have to go for some farm. Their dual lane is a huge influence on the game right now. Huge, huge influence on the game. We don't lose our tower, though, which is good. No, no towers have gone down. So I have a fang tooth coming up in a bit. I think what I'm going to do is try to farm out some of my blue side to get it off field. And then I'm going to push over to fang tooth. So that's what we're going to be looking to do here in a bit. We built up our Ruthless Broadsword, so that's going to help us shred through a little bit of armor. That's what Basilisk is good for. Basilisk is like more health, more armor shred, or like more damage, more armor shred, which is really nice. But yeah, we do need to uh, start working towards Fangtooth. So I'm going to let my team know with an early ping. We're going to just try to rip as much of this jungle as I can so I can get it off field. And then we are going to go over to dual lane all right we're, we're getting that tower down mid tower goes down that's nice we're just gonna run over there now so i want to be over there i can see the grux is over there the howitzer's over there i might actually we don't get that tower down i might shove this wave again how he's in a particularly bad spot how he's dead unfortunately he was a little out there early we're gonna shove this wave i don't think i can get to him to help him so what we're gonna try to do is, is guarantee this tower goes down Yeah, we're gonna knock this tower down really quickly. Alright, we knocked that tower down. The Grux is half hell. Gotta love Bellica. Hits me for a fourth of my HP for free, you know? Gotta love that hero. Very fun hero. He's just zoned me out. God, this hero is so stupid. I mean, I've <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when we don't respond to anything, you know? 
We just don't respond to anything. We just let them do whatever they want. People have to show up to things. Pretty rough game. The duo lane is just dominating us right now. Bellica is very broken. They're going to get that. So yeah, we're in a rough spot now. We are definitely in a rough spot. I'm outfarming the enemy jungler, but it doesn't really matter because we're getting so much influence out from lanes. We just need our carry and our support to like get into fights, which the support's able to, but they get that for free. We're going to have to commit to the next one. Um, our offlaner gets the tower, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely struggling in this game. Definitely struggling in this game. I'm just going to farm up. We're going to farm up, look for the next set of objectives. Don't need to save my smite for anything because there's nothing to save it for. I probably just need to look for like some kind of a pick. If we can kill their carry, which their carry is not great because he's building really poorly, but he's just getting a lot of kills. Traded a tier one for a tier one. Hopefully our Richter can start to roam and help us out. But for now, I am just going to farm. I am just going to farm. Looking at the map, everything's like pretty neutral right now. Not really anything we can do. So really the only thing I can do is farm. Finish up my Basilisk. That's going to be a big source of damage for us. And then next item, I'm probably going to have to build fairly tanky because I am not surviving very well. Like is doing a lot to me as well, so we'll see. We'll see what I want to build next. I think a stone wall is going to be really huge, but I also want magic armor against the Bellica. It's a tough decision. I think I'm going to go straight into a stone wall, um, or at least we'll start building armor. I can always build an Elafrost just to get more armor and a little bit more damage. Um, as we are going to have hopefully our Richter coming into some of these fights, I can maybe afford to do that. All right, lots of people over here. Let's see if I can help this out at all. We're gonna lose our mid tower if the Howie roams. If we have a way to engage them, that would be pretty big. All right, we got our Ice Horn Talons on the Richter. Okay. We did lose our tower for that. Nice. Our Richter's popping off on the off lane. This is fine because we're scaling, right? Like, what, what, and what I mean by that is that, like, naturally we are going to do better and better because the Richter is eventually going to join us in some of these fights. My team way overstayed for some reason and died, so that's not great. That's not great. There might be a little bit of time to get a mini prime. I think there is a little bit of time to get a mini prime. I'm going to go for this really quickly. So I'm trying to identify that there's a little bit of time here for a mini prime. Because it will go away. Get out of the fire trail. And we overstayed the fight super hard. Alright. We ripped down that mini prime. We're gonna ha we have to go for the next Fang Tooth like pretty strong. Our offlaner's crushing it though, so like we're we're kind of okay. We're kind of okay. We just need to get into some like bigger fights, more coordinated fights. And I haven't decided what I want to build here yet. I think Stone Wall is gonna be really helpful for me. Try to cover this lane really quickly. I don't even think I can. Stay on the gravestone then. We can just stay on the gravestone then. Alright, we'll just back out of here. Not sure why our Howie is here. Not really much for. Oh my goodness gracious. And she catches me on the end of her ability. Alright, we're gonna pop it over here. My goodness. My goodness. All right, we popped the ultimate to kill her, dude. She needed to die. She needed to die. All right, we're going for a stone wall. I think with all the like the the people that I have to stand next to in this game, stone wall is going to help me out a lot. Stone wall is an armor item 
that will do an, uh, an AOE stun around you once you get to 40% health. Um, and you have a little bit of mitigation in this item as well. So it's like, y it really just helps you kind of like reset and get back to a good place where you can fight again. So pretty important. Gives you like a little bit of freedom for a second, Re like fight relief. All right, we're probably gonna just have to, we, we lose our Richter a little bit in opportunistic moment. Wow, I messed up that jump. Um, we need to rip this very quickly before they get here. Because if we let them have this, that's a lot of, it's 8% stats on Fang 3. We need to get out of here. Yeah. No, we need to get out of here. We do not want to be here. All right, cool. That's going to slow them down, which means that's going to buy us time. That's really, really important. Slows them down, buys us some time. All right, I need 1,400 on my next buy. Try to help out here so that way they don't just go for some kind of a prime play, which I know they're not going to. I always got some farm in the mid. Really, we just need to get better vision out. We don't have a lot of vision, which I'm the kind of anti-vision person. Um, so we might sweep around in here just to make sure that they're not controlling too much vision. Let's jump on him for a second. We'll walk away. Don't need to commit to anything. Still a camp. That's fine. He's still a camp. That's fine. I just need to look for a little bit more farm. I see the Richter walking around in my jungle, which probably means that he's got um, some wards in my right side jungle. I can walk in on the Bellica here. We're gonna walk in on the Bellica. I know she has no knock up. We drop our Icecorn Talents to slow her. Hit a double ult really quick. All over the Bellica, good. I'm down to fight this Grux. Yeah, he's gonna dash away. Okay. Yeah, we could do the Prime. If our carry comes over, we can start this and do this Prime. We have a pick, they have no Balaka. If they come in, we can turn and fight. As long as we don't lose somebody. Okay, now we turn and fight. Drop our ice Icecorn Talons. We're going to pop our Cleanse to get out of this. We're going to go back on the Greystone. Greystone criminally gets out. We're taking a good bit of damage, waiting for them. We just have to focus on burning this down. Watching the damage spike. We got it. Turn and kill him. Nice. Now we shove. Nice. I'm going to be right back. Notify, be right back. We're going to go get our stone wall. A little bit close, a little bit close. Honestly, Chimera had a huge part of that because of the fact that um, it's very hard to take that much prime damage unless you're Chimera. Chimera can heal a lot. If I was like pretty much any other jungler, I probably would have been taking a lot of damage. That fight would have played out very differently because I would have had to peel off the fight and go for or peel off the prime and go for the fight. Um, I think that's a pretty important thing to try to note. If Howitzer dies here, that's really bad. I need to try to trade it at least. Oh, that's bad. That's a bad pick there. That kind of crushes a lot of our push. I mean, we'll still be able to push, but not a good time to lose him. Oh, Bellica is just such a broken hero. Such a broken hero. I have to play for my health regen, let the other lanes push. Yep, Prime does give health regen, so we just gotta let the health regen kick in. I'll hold on to this. He could be rapping on me, so I need to back up. Still don't see the Grux. Peek 
in the fog wall. I'll let him beat on this tower. Okay, let's see Grex on the left lane. Just gonna lift the shove. I almost had my ultimate up. If I could have jumped on her, I probably could have killed her. He's he's doing it. He's doing his thing. We just have to play off our regen here. Yeah, we play around the carries. Carries are the name of the game, man. Carries are crazy. Carries are a big part of the game. They do all the damage. We're gonna focus on killing the wave. Let him kill the uh, the tower. All right. Gotta back it up. Still have 60 seconds on our orb. So as they're shoving this in, I keep this pressure. You have to be close to the minions to empower them. So as my minion wave comes up, yeah, Drongo's starting to take over now. Now we're fine. Now we are fine. We've been fine since that prime. So now I can focus on this. I can focus on killing the wave. Not really what I want. We'll walk away from Grux. How he needs to learn some self-preservation. Gotta keep yourselves alive. Important important to know when you can and can't push something. Alright, still have 25 seconds. We probably just walk away. There is a fang tooth that's up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna retreat, we're gonna back up, we're gonna be right back, we're gonna go to fang tooth. And I am working on building a crystalline curious because I do feel like I need to stay alive a little bit better. Actually, do I want to do that? Let me think about this. Magic armor. We're going to go for a void helm. That's going to give me a little bit more healing for myself. I don't really know if I need the movement speed. So void helm has 10, heal 10% more from all sources. So um, whenever I whenever I ult somebody, I'm going to get that abyssal grasp, heal 3% max health over four seconds. But whenever I'm just doing normal auto attacks and using my regenerate passive or spirit regeneration, I'll be healing 10% more. Oh, Grex is right here. All right, silence. Ooh, I want to catch the Belkin Knights. We got the rad rounds on her. That's a that's a big pick. That is a pretty huge pick. Drop our Ice Storm Talons. We're just going to rip right into this. Nice. Yeah, the Grex being in the pit, man, that was that kind of started that off a little bit. All right, anticipate the damage. Watch it go to 1K and pop it. Okay. Grayson's gonna jump in. He doesn't have a smite, so I'm not sure why he would jump in to begin with. And now we just push. Now we push. All right, we have our Void Helm, but we don't uh, don't feel like I need it. We got three down. We have a window of opportunity. I talk about windows of opportunity a lot. Three down, we can push. We could potentially just end off this wave. Even though it's not a prime wave, we can potentially just end. I'll focus the minions. They can focus the power. They only have you up. They're going to be up, though. So what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to catch the new waves. So, um... At the 30 minute, or 30, every 30 seconds, a new wave spawns. So that's what I'm looking to do. I'm letting my team push, and I'm going to catch this wave so I can let the other wave catch up to us. So you can see the Richter's doing the same thing. I don't want to stand that close to the Bellica, but you can see I'm catching the new wave. I'm just going to rip through this real quick. Use my hunt just to get that moving a little bit as well. So now we want to look to overwhelm them. And this is going to have to be a, like a dive, a dove power fight. Okay. Cleanse our way out of there. Pop, pop our ultimate onto the Grux. That's going to finish off the Grux. And same thing. New waves are going to come in. Catch the new waves every 30 seconds. Right, we're just going to heal off of him. He's going to take me down there. Might have overstayed a little bit. Might have overstayed a little bit. Oh, he's, he's going. He's getting the heal. He's doing it. Alright, I think y'all I think y'all retreat. Maybe? No, maybe not. If, if he's going to dive in on you. Alright, we're going to look to build a Citadel here, most likely. Like Citadel, Elafrost, something like that. Just you know, some, some more armor, some more damage, however we want to do it. Doesn't really matter. Now with those picks, they could probably end the game. I feel like I kind of like slowed down on my explanation of things. Um, yeah, they could just go for orb. Oh, our Howie does not know how to keep himself alive. 
He's got to he's got to back up and keep himself alive, so that way we have better window of opportunity. So so look, the perfect example of windows of opportunity right now. There they have two players down and my team could try to go and rip the prime um they do have me up right now and but we, we're down our howitzer so if the enemy team is smart they're gonna probably try to leave like one person in base clearing and then they're gonna send the rest of the people here at prime to try to watch us to stop us to make sure that we don't get this this is a very tall order for them this is very very hard because all we have to do is dance these waves like we can dance this fight we can probably just do it. Yeah, we, we probably just do it. And uh, I'm gonna slow my DPS because I did double smite this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna slow down to make sure that I can get. Oh my goodness! Hold on, dude. dude this guy's ripping through this. I don't have my ult yet. Oh my god, he was ripping through this. I didn't have my hunt yet. Um, but yeah, so they have to basically defend, and it's incredibly hard for them to defend all the waves and to try to come fight us. Even though it was like a four v five because our howitzer was down for a little bit, it's just very very hard for them to do. Double ultimates on the Grux. Grux goes down. We're able to just catch up to him. Nice follow up from the Richter. And now we just walk this in. I can go catch the right wave to just pull more waves in. It's going to shove up to me. So I'll really just be coming up to this like respawn point right here. And we're just looking at the respawn points. So here, here. An enemy inhibitor is Try to ping that for the teammates. Alright. We could look to shove this wave here as well. Almost have our ultimate. I could probably flash in and just hit the twin blast. That will go back and bite the gray soon, because why not? Alright, and then that's the game. That's the game. Good game, good game. All right, bit of a rough start, but we got our way through there. Drop a like on the video, subscribe for future predecessor content. Hopefully you learned something. Like I said, I feel like I slowed down explaining my decisions because I was just kind of like really deeply into the game. Um, but you farm, you look for opportunities, you try to create opportunities, you pay attention to the windows of opportunity. You know, you look at those timers, you look and see when can you go and get, uh, you know, an objective done. And when you're when you're farming, this is a simple trick. When you're farming, look at look ahead of you, right? Look at the lane ahead of you and, and see if that pathing is going to lead to something. Um, thinking about invading takes a little bit more experience and practice, and I didn't even do enough of it this game. Uh, but there you have it, friends. As always, be sure to kind of want to tell someone you love them, and I'll see you for the next video.